Happy Halloween. Wow, I knocked my camera over too. How's it going, everyone? It is Halloween morning. I had promised you I was going to do a show. Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. As promised, the Dunce Cap of the Month show being given, being recorded here at like 6.04 in the morning, Halloween morning, so it'll be ready for you. Halloween, Halloween night. Now, those of you that are used to me doing the characters, I know you want to, does anybody even remember them? Did anybody like them? I have no idea. But now that I am, unfortunately, doing the show by myself, it became a bit much to do. And there were also a lot of, um, a lot of memories tied to them. So I, I just quit doing them. However... I not only have the biggest collection of stupidity that you've ever seen. It's what the Dunce Cap of the Month award show is. And I know I say this a lot when I start the show, but I mean wholeheartedly. These are some amazing idiots. By the way, my Halloween costume. Guy Foss, mask, and a lighter. Who gets it? All right, friends. Uh, this is some strange dumdies that I have here for Halloween um, most of them are, the first few are kind of creepy and scary, and then it's just pure idiocy. You're not going to want to miss a second of this, if my phone lets me record even a second of this. All right, and, uh, then, I came across this, by the way. Print and Press is hosting Goldie the Goat, the official mascot of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now, the reason I bring this up on, on Halloween is because how many people have heard you're being in the NFL is, you know, in league with the devil, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I, I've never been one to buy into much of that. But why would the NFL logo be the GOAT? Now, see, when you ask, when you ask yourself those questions, life gets interesting, doesn't it? How about this? How about this for some stupidity? Bed Bath & Beyond pulls black pumpkins over a black face blackface complaint. That's like saying that my Guy Foss mask, because it happens to be black instead of white, is blackface. That's absolutely ridiculous. Now, anytime anything has a dark, creepy face, now it offends somebody because it was blackface. And I'm going to go one further. When Eddie Murphy posed as a, uh, a white man, a Jewish white, a Jewish man too, I believe. He did a and I thought it was hilarious when Peter Sellers was an Indian, a Chinaman, a Frenchman. When Peter Sellers was virtually anybody, he was the most brilliant man that ever acted. Damn it. The most brilliant man who has ever acted. It wasn't called offensive. Eddie Murphy was not offensive. Laurel and Hardy were not offensive because they did a scene in blackface. Laurel and Hardy, as a matter of fact, did more for black people in Hollywood than virtually anyone. So it's time to get over everything being offensive. And Bed Bath & Beyond's pumpkins were not even blackface pumpkins. They were just black pumpkins. I've seen yellow pumpkins, red, all of it. They were just creepy, like rotting-looking pumpkins. It's blackface. Now, this is the one. If I, if I would have still had my characters, if I was still doing the, the weird characters that used to be on this show, this would have been the dumb D that, uh, that uh, uh, Ard Mortise would have gotten. Paul Joseph Watson, Prison Planet. Forget bugs. Some people are now eating human blood sausage. Now, again, I've said for a very long time, and I've backed it up with copious amounts of data, so much of this global warming, vegan, yada yada thing is tied to wickedness. Plain and simple. And I would say beyond that, they're, they're eating steaks. I got news for you. They're eating the very best of the very best. You and I, how many articles have we covered where they want people to eat bugs? I'm not talking about like fear factor. That's great. I'm talking about they want us. They want to see cockroach. Look at a cockroach milk. They want to put ground cockroaches into our bread. It's sustainable. Global warming is a myth. Okay, there, we're going to get to that later. There's no data for global warming. This is about control, and this, this is what they've got planned for us, friends. 
Forget bugs, a pop PJ Dub writes, some people are now using their own bodily fluids to make human blood sausages. Click off now if you are eating your lunch. No, it's Halloween. You just listen to all of it. A video out of Spain posted by RT shows blood being taken out of the body via syringe mixed with grated meat, broiled, and then eat gross. The clip was posted without any additional information, but it could be related to Raul Escun, a woodcutter from the remote village of Spain, who makes sausages from human blood, claiming, claiming it's vegan-friendly because no animals are harmed. Where does the grated meat that the blood is mixed with come from? I don't even want to know. By the way, if you like the backing music, it is uh, a Midnight Syndicate. You can see my article with them on Blasting News. It's something that I have been thinking about since I was a child, he told the local. It doesn't seem that weird to me. PJ Dub writes, okay then. There's a taboo about this sort of thing for a very good reason. It's disgusting. As we previously highlighted, not only is the consumption of insects being mainstreamed, and there's a link to that here at Prison Planet, but Vice even gave a platform for perverts who like to use bugs and worms as part of their sex play. Yeah, they were putting worms up the male penis. That just sounds great. I used to think I was a little strange with some stuff. I like. I am like G-rated compared to like worms up the penis. I'm sorry, it's not happening. Anybody with me? As we drove into clown, as we devolve, he writes into clown world order. Things only appear to be getting more demented. I told you it would have been Arg Mortises. All right, guys. What other idiots do you got, Sam? Yeah, you grossed me out. You promised me idiots, Sam. Is that what you're thinking? I've got your idiots. Chris Menahan, Information Liberation. His article made it on the Dumb's Cap of the Month. Listen to this. California. Thugs flash mob... Excuse me. Thugs flash rob Burlingame Apple Store for the third time in a month. Now, before I get into the story, let me explain something to you. Those of you with a brain in your head, people will sometimes ask, well, why would you need more than 10 bullets? Why would you need a weapon that could potentially spray bullets all over the place? How about if 30 people come into your store and start stealing things? Just a whole mob of them. Just you are, they, We should just let them go? You don't know if they're armed or not. You don't know if they're going to rape your employees or not. You have no idea. That's why you need more than 10 bullets. Listen to this. You're going to love new America. Yet again, the thieves escape after stealing electronics from the Apple store in downtown. The third incident in a month, according to KTVU. Seven young men snatched phones, tablets, and laptops from display tables, breaking the cable, breaking cables attached to the devices. Now, let me say, I understand there were seven here, and I used the analogy earlier about needing more than ten bullets. Go ahead and look up some of the, some of the really large flash mobs. But here we go. While making their escape, they almost hit an SUV and people on the street. Yeah, there's no reason to shoot them in the store before they go mowing over people in the parking lot trying to get away. I must be terribly insensitive. There were pedestrians in the street, including kids. It's for the children. We're taking guns away for the children. The children. I hate that saying. Whenever, whenever you hear anything is for the children, it means hose the adults. That's what it means. If you want to do something for the children, why don't you arm the employees so that your children don't get run over from some lunatic stealing phones and trying to get away? They almost ran over a bunch of kids and then sped off down the road. Part of the storefront is covered because of the incident this week in which thieves broke in when the store to the closed store and stole property. If they ever catch these thugs, they'll probably enroll them in one of these new programs like they have in Richmond where they pay criminals not to commit crimes. There's a link to it. It's a, uh, it is a uh, information liberation article as well. 
Another similar flash mob was caught on tape last month in North Face Premium Outlets in Charlottesville, and that was the one that had many, many people where you would need a, uh, a lot more armament. But no, Guns Cap of the Month. Take guns away. It's for the children. All right, guys, I'm moving on. i got a few left here, and they get dumber and dumber. If you're new to the show, they get dumber and dumber the more that we go. All the way up to, of course, the winner of the Dumps Cap of the Month. Listen to this. Daily Caller. Well, this is classic. Antifa call, calls a black man who de-radicalized KKK members a white supremacist. Now, that's a double dundee for those of you keeping the score here on the Dumps Cap of the Month. First of all, it is a dundee. Because it would be a bit difficult for a black man to be a white supremacist. Now, I know people have said, what that means is that the black person is more interested in Western culture and white society. It doesn't matter if he is a fan of the Indian Hindu society. It doesn't matter if he is a fan of the Penguin Society up down, I'm going to be down where the penguins go. South. <sighs> White supremacists do not allow black members, with very few exceptions, into their ranks. Virtually never. Yeah, I know. There's one or two cases. You can scour the internet and find anything, okay? But for the most part, it doesn't matter what he thinks. White supremacists do not allow black members. Second of all, if he is de-radicalizing KKK members, if he is helping them to get away from their foolish notions about race, and they are foolish, then wouldn't he be a friend? But they're treating him like an Uncle Tom. So listen to this. Written by Shelby Talcott, uh, Talcott excuse me. Antifa labeled a black man who has worked to de-radicalize KKK members a white supremacist at a Pennsylvania event last month. Now, to be fair, I really did try to make this a winner, but I could not find anyone, not even a P.O. box, to mail anything to for the Antifa. There's no way to contact Antifa, so I couldn't send them a dumps cap for this, but it was on my radar. Daryl Davis was a speaker at the Ending Racism event organized by Minds, as a link to it, which was part of a series intended to create dialogue and promote viewpoint diversity. Davis, a musician, is a race relations expert who has spent years speaking to and rehabilitating groups like the KKK, members from the groups. About 40 Antifa members showed up to protest ending racism, which was moved from a New Jersey theater to a center in Pennsylvania because Antifa threatened to burn down the theater. Now, if you're burning down the speaking places where your political rivals are speaking, doesn't that sound a bit like what the fascists did to the communists in Nazi Germany? So isn't Antifa here acting a bit more like Nazis or fascists than the people who they're protesting and calling fascists? I told you it was the Dunce Cap of the Month show. You thought I was kidding. Davis told the Daily News Foundation some Antifa members called him, who, uh, Davis, who is black, a white supremacist for attending the event. I laughed. I thought it was funny, Davis told the, DN, the DCNF. What it proves is they had no point. They had no evidence of anything. When it boils down to just name-calling people and you don't show any proof and you refuse to talk to them, they refuse to even come in, there were no Klansmen, no neo-Nazis in there or even alt-right people. Antifa was invited to come inside and attend the after-party, but refused, Davis said. Refusing dialogue? Sounds fascist to me. 
Many Antifa members are aware of Davis and the work he has done. He said Davis knew organizers at the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, and has worked to help individuals involved in extremist group to lessen violence and racism in America. Antifa is the most fascist organization, and this is where you're reminded in history that the Nazis were against communism only because they wanted an authorian figurehead. That was the difference between Nazi socialism and communism. Also, the two overlapped so much that the far left and the far right, as it's referred to anyhow, merges together in an indistinguishable sort of blob. And I think it's at this point where that becomes extremely obvious. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. If you would like to donate, you can do so at the Correct Views at Hotmail.com. Donate through PayPal. Right now, my computer is giving me the funny circle thing here, but we're going to keep on moving on until, you know, whatever point where we just crash. But, but you know what? Before I go on, I do want to mention this. How many of you remember um, uh, Ben Carson was called a, a, a white supremacist? Yeah, the, the, black, the black politician in charge of Hub. Yeah. That really is how dumb we're getting, people. That really is how dumb we are getting. Oh, come on already. There we go. I think. All right, maybe I do have an all-out computer freeze here. And if so, that is fine, too, because I have the Dunce Cap of the Month Award done anyhow. And I'd be more than happy just to go right to it if my computer is going to continue to rebel against me. And it appears for the moment that it will. All right, friends, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. The, the, big old, the big winner here. How many of you know Just show of hands here. I'm going to have to skip a few of the, the articles that I'm actually going to get to because this loner computer just is not cooperating with us this evening. How many of you know that the Bible is pretty clear that you're not supposed to pray to trees? You're not supposed to worship the creation instead of the creator? Maybe, maybe somebody's heard that a time or two. Well, there are some people in this world that have not heard that. And you might be surprised to find out that one of those people is, in fact, a Christian college. Okay, I'm just giving you a hint to where the dunce cap is actually going. That's your hint. Now my computer is unlocking. That's a hint. You're not going to believe how dumb it is. You still with me? Everybody's still with me? Good. Um... I thought this was absolutely priceless. New York Times blames airplanes for the 9-11 attack. This is on Prison Planet. Um, Paul Joseph Watson, he finds the best dumbies. He, his articles make it a few times a month. He's awesome. Um, the New York Times chose to honor the 18th anniversary of the September 11th atrocity by blaming airplanes for carrying out the attack. Eighteen years have passed since airplanes took aim and brought down the World Trade Center. Now, the reason I'm mentioning that on the Dunce Cap of the Month is because they do anything they can to not say Islamic. And that is why, and this is the way the left turned things around. If you're, if you're still with the show, let me know, because this is very important as a takeaway. The way the left turns things around is when George W. Bush was calling them Islamo-fascists, he was separating the people causing the problem from regular Islam, which, you know, makes sense. By never wanting to mention Islam, not only are you not reporting the news, but you're making a protected class for no reason. You don't do it if Christians shoot a place up. You think about that. For, for some reason, there's some great pass given to Islam to the point where major outlets now are referring to that as an airplane attack. Nothing to do with radical Islam. I mean, these are the same people that were praising al-Baghdadi 
Al Baghdadi, all bagged and daddy. And I'm calling him a great scholar. Uh, this is also uh, from uh, PJ Dub. Burger King removes ham from hamburger to avoid offending Muslims. Now, let me ask you a question. When did even mention, I there is no ham and hamburger. I get about, that's regardless, it, it refers to something entirely different. I know my history, it's fine. But when did even mentioning something that somebody else might not like become a great sin for the protected class of Islam? And again, I have no, I don't care what religion you are. I'm pretty libertarian there, though I am Christian. But my point is, Everything now is ushering in this, and a lot of it is because Islam has an amazing control over its people, and that's one of the things that the government wants to do by using Islam as a battering ram to bring PC culture down our throats like liquid plumber. Burger King in South Africa is dropping the word ham from hamburger to avoid offending Muslims. The, yes, really, the double spicy hamburger will now become the double spicy burger, while the triple hamburger with cheese becomes the triple burger with cheese. And, of course, the Hamburger King Jr. is now the kid's burger. The company, whose headquarters is based in Miami, Florida, said the word is being eliminated in order to be more respectful to Muslim customs. Muslim customers. The company admitted that its outlet in South Africa would be losing the halal certification because of popular demand for some sandwiches that include bacon. So now Burger King is apologizing for even serving pork. Soon, what are they? Oh, they want us to eat insects, remember? Do you see how this is circular? But you, they're not going to be eating that crap. Ridiculous. Our friends, the smoking gun, DEA, the illegal... DEA, an illegal ran narcotics ring out of the Ohio jail. This is a short one, but it's great. An imprisoned illegal immigrant used a smuggled cell phone to run a drug trafficking operation that distributed fentanyl, cocaine, methamphetamine, and marijuana smuggled into the U.S. from Mexico, according to prosecutors. Why is this making the dunce cap of the month show? Because it ties into the ultimate dunce, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders wants to allow people who are in prison now to have access to cell phones. Do you see where this is going? Not only could they intimidate witnesses, and you wouldn't even have to talk to them. You would just, you know, call any kind of code. Gangs have codes long before they ever get arrested. Do you have any idea how much damage somebody can do with a cell phone? And now, I don't care if they're they have a cell phone and it's you know it's constantly monitored, but if Bernie's going to do that, a he didn't say it, and second of all, that's going to be extremely expensive. But again, that's the progressive way. They don't think anything through. They just act on emotion. Usually, that's a step in a horrendous direction. We've only got three before the winter. Listen to this. Leftist protest opening of Canada's first Chick-fil-A to defend the oppressed bodies of chickens. These would be the people that are excited to be eating bugs because their brain is roughly half the size of the average gnat's penis which may or may not have worms in it. Leftists are staging a die-in to protest against the opening of Canada's first Chick-fil-A, with one demonstrator drawing attention to the oppressed bodies of chickens. Animal rights and LGBT activists have gathered outside the company in Toronto to unite against hate. They're just mad because Chick-fil-A dares to have a point of view that doesn't agree with theirs. How dare they do such a thing? Hey ho, homophobia's gotta go. The sight of a customer in a MAGA hat also caused multiple breakdowns because even seeing anything is horrible. They're upset about the homophobia because there's a phobia attached to having a different point of view. Again, 
back to what I was saying uh, earlier in, the, in this broadcast, I'm pretty libertarian here. I don't really care what you do in the bedroom. I think it's gross, but if you want to play with bugs and worms in the bedroom, I just don't really care. However, my problem with gay marriage, and I think I'm not. I think this is one of the stances that Chick Fil A has, and I agree. If you force churches to marry gay couples, then what you have done now is trampled the First Amendment. Uh, libertarianism would, uh, common sense, constitutionalism even would say, if a church wants to marry same-sex couples, they should be allowed to. That's fine. And people say, well, what happens if you marry more than one person? Well, I agree with Ron Paul there. I almost wore his shirt with the mask, but the white didn't look right. Why don't we get the government out of marriage business? It's a religious matter. No government in our marriage. Solves the whole LGBT whining. Common sense. Two before the winter, friends. New York Times blames... Oh, no, I did that one. I did that one. It blames uh, for the 911 attack. And now we have one left. We have one left. I forgot the computer freeze up. All right. Now, this, this is the first time I've ever done this. This runner-up ties into the winner. So stay with me here. Let's look at the problem of global warming. <laughs> PJ Dub, love him. A ship carrying passengers who included a group of climate change warriors who were concerned about melting Arctic ice got stuck in the ice halfway between Norway and the North Pole. Going to study the loss of Arctic ice. Now, I've reported on here before that there has been record levels of ice. And I've explained to you, I'll do it real quick in case you just, you still with me? Is just tuned in. They'll use the natural melting cycle, which happens in cycles. The global warming crowd were, crowd were using images of a natural melting event and then say that it is proof of the melting ice caps, when in reality, if you let the cycle go, there builds up more ice than ever before. Arctic tourist ship MS Malmo with 16 passengers on board got stuck in the ice on September the 3rd off Longyearbyen Svalbard Appalachia. I'm sure I butchered the hell out of that. According to Marine Bulletin, I am not from Norway. The ship is an Arctic tour with climate change documentary teams, tourists concerned about climate change and melting ice. The passengers were safely evacuated by helicopter. They couldn't even get to them. Something is very wrong with the Arctic ice. Instead of melting as ordered by UN IPCC, it captured the ship with climate change warriors, joked Airfree Skolovarkin. The story is similar to a 2014 incident when a Chinese icebreaker had to be sent to rescue dozens of global warming researchers and environmentalists who got stranded on a ship which got stuck in the supposed Antarctic ice which had melted. The melted ice they got stuck in, I should say. Poster child environmentalist Greta Thunberg, don't drop the Thunberg, has not commented on the latest incident. And that brings us to the Dunce Cap of the Month award freaking winner. Dum, 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 dee, die. Frizzy frag. Oh, yeah, I don't have the music. Or the frizzy. Um, Michael Snyder, End of the American Dream. I gave you a hint that this was coming. If you want to see the award, I don't have a printer, but I'm going to get it printed. I'm putting it on the Facebook comment line. So look for this video when it goes up, Halloween 2019. On that comment line, I'll show you a picture of the, uh, the, the actual award. I'm going to get it printed, and it's going to be mailed to the Union Theological Seminary, along with the dunce cap, which is why I asked for donations, because this costs money. This is the winner. This is the stupidest story you may ever see. The folks at Union Theological Seminary are taking the concept of talking to your plants to a frightening new level. Each year, Michael Snyder writes, and he's, he's aggregated my work before. That's not why I picked his article, but I just want to throw it out there. 
Students at the seminary pay a ridiculous amount of money to go to the school, and they are there to be trained to be Christian leaders of tomorrow, but instead they are being taught to confess their climate sins to potted, potted plants, and eventually these impressionable young minds will be leading churches and Christian institutions all over America. That's a pleasant thought. Uh, not only are they completely going off the rails with talking to plants in terms of confession, which we'll get to in a minute, but they believe a lie. There is no global warming. 500 UN scientists delivered a letter to the United Nations the same day that that extremely misguided teenager was rambling on about nonsense. I realize that the story is so bizarre, as Snyder writes, that it sounds like somebody made it up, but it's actually true. The following was posted by the official Twitter account of Union Theological Seminary, this month's Dunce Cap of the Month award winner, and he writes, uh, Today in chapel we confessed to plants. Together we held our grief, joy, regret, hope, guilt, and sorrow in prayer, offering them to the beings who sustain us and whose gift we often fail to honor. But do you confess to the plants in your life? Let me pause before I even get there. Doesn't that sound a lot like what you do if you're a pagan? And I don't care if you're a pagan, but that's not Christianity. There's pictures of them doing it. On Twitter, needless to say, this tweet got a tremendous amount of attention, and the following are some of the interesting responses. This is the sins confessed. This is great. You'd probably taste good simmering in butter. These plants think you're all morons. They exchanged the truth for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the creator. Romans one twenty five. How every day there's a match and a lighter fluid within five steps of them. <laughs> plants. My confession wrote someone. I'm a judgmental to. I am judgmental toward Larry the cucumber for exercising green privilege over Bob the tornado. Of course, a lot of very confused parents probably contacted the school as well because this was definitely not what most of them had in mind when they heard that their children were going to attend seminary. But instead of backing down, the school posted a 10-part response on Twitter in which they defended the practice. It's a beautiful ritual. We live in the throes of a climate emergency. A lie. Right there. Lie. So now we've got a lying church seminary. Wonderful. And don't tell me they don't know, because I'm about 90% sure they do. And if not, they shouldn't be teaching. Bunk science. We are in the throes of a climate emergency, a crisis created by humanity's arrogance and our disregard for creation. They capitalize creation. Far too often we see natural world only as resources to be extracted for our use, not divinely created in their own right, worthy of honor, thanks, and care. No, we are called to, as human beings, tame the earth. Yet don't! We need to unlearn habits of sin and death, and part of that must be building new bridges to a natural world. This is lunacy. That means creating a new spiritual and intellectual framework. Oh, so the, the, the regular Christian theology. You could take the ham out of hamburger for Muslims, but Christians need new spiritual and intellectual framework. Oh, I see how that works. So that we can relate to the plants and animals whom we share the earth with. Churches have a huge role to play in this endeavor. Oh, I bet they do. Brainwashing. I mean, theologies that encourage humans to dominate and master the earth have played a deplorable role in degrading God's creation. Yeah, by building nuclear power plants in large part to stop global warming, which isn't happening. We must birth a new theology. What does the Bible say? To watch for new theologies at the end time. They write it right out here. We must birth a new theology, new liturgy to heal and to sow, replacing ones that reap and destroy. And uh, we must all participate in this work. 
Without a doubt, he writes, humanity is destroying the planet. In fact, I just wrote an entire article in which I discussed the fact that nearly 30% of all birds in North America have been wiped out since 1970. Snyder also writes, but the theory that if you just pull enough carbon dioxide out of the air that everything is going to be okay again is absolutely ludicrous. Plants need carbon dioxide, and scientists tell us that there have been times in the history of the planet when the levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere were far, far higher than they are today. Yes, before we drove the car, before we built a car. During those times, life on our planet greatly thrived. So instead of confessing climate sins that those students at the Union Theological Seminary should really be doing, what they should really be doing, is apologizing to those poor wilting plants for trying to take their carbon dioxide away. Best, best quote ever, Mr. Snyder. The Union Theological Seminary is not the only one promoting this wickedness, and it goes on and on and on here, and uh, some of the confessions I've been using plastic golf tees from time to time. I will never use plastic golf tees again. As green as I can be, I print all of my documents at work because I'm better able to edit versus my home computer screen. <laughs> I work less than two miles from where I live, and I drive to work nearly every single day. These are the sins that they're, that they're, uh, they're, they're saying they committed. Normal people can't afford electric cars, so until the costs come back, I keep driving my combustion engine. It's not warming the planet. I can live without many things to help our planet, but I must draw the line at air conditioning. I would wilt. I use a lot of Q-tips. I can't find a better alternative. An alternative for Q-tips. For a lie. When man isn't warming the planet. I have a mobile boarding pass, so I will get to the airport and run to a printing machine. Paper makes me feel safe. I'm so sorry. All right, friends, so I needless to say, they have without a doubt and without any uh, any question at all earned the Dunn's Cap of the Month Award. So what I am going to do here now is I am going to stroll over here to put the actual light on. Give me, give me one minute here. I'm going to give a roll over here. And I'm going to show you the actual cap that they are, in fact, getting sent. Now, I've never done a cap this extensive, but I don't know if the school is aware of how terribly misguided they are and how there are ample levels of science to prove them wrong. So, this is a pretty extensive dunce cap. I'm going to uh, show you each piece of the artwork as we go. Again, this is being mailed to them. I just pointed at you with a dunce cap. This is being mailed to them. I have a picture of the double. I have Christians confessing to trees. Ha 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 ha. Very proud of this particular dunce cat. He's throwing his pitchfork. Um, there's a penguin here. It says, how could you silly humans have a consensus when OSS News showed that 31,000 scientists report no convincing evidence of man-made climate change? Source. Oregon Institute of Science and Medicine, published in OSS Foundation. I wrote, look it up. All right, Penguin. Yeah. Um, I, I, I ship in the ice. This might have been my best drawing. Ship in the ice. Yes, uh, need rescued. We sailed to the Arctic Ocean to study the lack of ice and seemed to be stuck in the ice. And I wrote, Lower Arrow says, it happened to the Polaris Stern and the rescue vessel Academic Fedrov. It's a fact. Look it up. And I also, of course, just uh, read you the other one that it happened. That's a pretty good drawing of a ship in the ice. Um, I drew a tree. It's the tree. It says uh, he's thinking, he, presumptuous of me, he's thinking, so I may be but a tree, but didn't the Bible say to confess sins to God? When did I get the job? He is saying, the tree, I am a tree and I flourish in carbon dioxide. Why are you taking my food? Did you confess that? And that's, that's one of the points that the, the, the climate scientists uh, with the UN in the letter that I was referring to sent. 
Um, this is great. Uh, which side are you on? 666. And of course, there are no sides because it's a circle. Um, I drew a gentleman here. It says uh, he's pointing to a sign and the sign says, do not worship the Lord your God in the way that these pagan peoples worship their God. Deuteronomy 12.4, New Living Translation. He's saying, you mean like confessing your sins to plants? I thought I drew him very well. Feet and everything. Um, now, this one's tricky. I like this one. This is a palm tree and a priest collar. And it says, I am a priest and a palm tree. Confess to me, my sapling sash, slash child. Yes. See it? He's in a priest. Frog. Very nice. Um, there's another individual here I drew, and he says, uh, have you ever put your hands up and asked, is there a consensus on global climate change? If there is, why did 500 scientists give a letter to the UN saying that there is no climate emergency? I wrote, this happened on the same day that Greta spoke. Look it up. And again, I'm sending this to the seminary, and I am a Christian, but I'm sorry. What they've done is a travesty here. And of course, that that, that is all of them. That is the Delts Cap of the Month. Their award, which again, you'll be able to see in the comment line until I get it printed to send. It's a picture of the college with a dunce cap on it. And it says, uh, Dunce Cap of the Month Award. <laughs> This Dunce Cap of the Month award goes to the alleged Christian College of Union Theological Seminary for failing to understand that over 500 UN scientists have recently shown in a letter that there is no climate emergency. There is no authentic science to prove that man is warming the planet whatsoever. You are teaching one side of a fake claim and calling bunk science factual, thus misinstructing the students. It has been far warmer and far colder during periods long before man was even a factor on the earth. Geology proves this, as do countless other sciences. The Bible says that man is to confess his sins, keep a short account, to God, not to one's potted plant. For sounding more like a bad Hollywood reboot of the little shop of horrors I wrote than anything resembling a credible Christian college, you win the dunce cap of the month. May God forgive your folly. And I put the address to the show. That would be youtube.com slash the correct views. Friends, thank you for listening. Good night. God bless. Happy Halloween. And if you're enjoying it with someone that you genuinely love, make sure you give them a great big hug. because. There's a lot of people roaming the streets on Halloween that face some things far scarier on a regular basis. Good night, friends. God bless.